Transplantation is somewhat unique. There are many medical subspecialties, but in this one, when you see the patient, they're usually really ill. They've been sent to you basically as a last-ditch effort. The ability to save the lives of the vast majority of these patients, we get somewhat numbed to it, but ultimately, if you stop, step back and take a moment to reflect upon it, you realize that you've done something really important. So 22 years ago, I founded the Hypertrophic Cardiomyopathy Association to help patients who were diagnosed with HCM. I myself was diagnosed with HCM at age 12, and I had lived 36 years managing and balancing life on a balance beam with HCM until last September when my heart just gave up. Walking to my mailbox was a challenge. I was down to having about two to three good hours a day. Looking back, how I felt, frankly, I was dying. Baseball has always been the sport that I've, I've loved to play, loved to watch. Ken continued to play baseball after college. He was offered a game when his mother received an urgent phone call. I got a phone call from my daughter saying that Ken had collapsed on the field. The doctors said that it was a fatal arrhythmia and they still don't really understand how I woke myself up. Ken attended a hospital near his home in New York State. At the other hospital they said it would take probably about three to six months if I was lucky to get a heart. So I was just deteriorating at a rate that we were a bit concerned and were curious about a timeline and if I'd get you know a heart in time at that hospital. So started looking up other hospitals in the area. Uh, Newark was one of the ones that came up and was recommended. Best decision I ever made was to do my research in advance to know where my best treatment options were for transplant. And I looked literally all over the country and stayed right here at home in New Jersey. As I went into surgery, they were uh, trying to set up an atrial line in my right wrist. So I made sure to warn the nurse that that was my throwing hand. So if, uh, if there were any issues in there when I woke up, I'd, I'd know who he was and I'd know where to find him. And the next thing I can remember is I'm laying in the bed. I know it's post-surgery and I couldn't hear my heartbeat and I couldn't feel my heartbeat. I have felt the pounding in my chest since I'm 12 years old. And it's replaced with this sweet little flutter of just a regular heartbeat. And I just smiled. That, that first day was, was very exciting, just knowing that, you know, okay, well I made it out and now it's, you know, it's time to move forwards and you know, see, see what else is down the road. Within weeks after the transplant, Ken was cleared to get in shape for baseball. I, I thought I'd be out for all of 2017. I didn't think I'd get back on the field for another year. After six weeks, the doctors here cleared me to play and you know start working out. Jury's out on if I was any good back then, but you know I was on the field and that was the important thing. And now um, I've run three five Ks. I have been all over the country again doing my work, helping patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and I have more energy than I did when I was 25. When I tell people that I've been transplanted for like 18 years and stuff, then uh, they're excited. Before the transplant, I felt tired. And after transplant and stuff, I just feel like there's so much in life waiting for me. Before my heart transplant, I wasn't able to do much of anything but sit home and wonder when that day would come when I would be able to do the things that I enjoy most. Now I can see my grandchildren, I can see my great-grandchildren, and I can dance, which I really love. What I hear from patients and family when they, ask, they see us is, what's life gonna be after the transplant? And I said, you get your life back. I looked for the best care I could find, and I put my faith 100% in the hands of a team that I had very carefully chosen and my expectations were exceeded just about every step of the way. You can't imagine what it feels like for your child to have a life-threatening illness. It's, it's scary beyond anything you could ever describe. The people that worked here, it's family. It's, I can't believe it. It's such a difference than any other place I've ever been. We felt so welcomed here Everybody will go out of their way, even the person who's sweeping the floor, to help you out. It's all the doctors, the nurses, in the ICU, the step-down unit, you know, everyone that's helped me save my life.